one thing I like to do when shooting with any kind of camera really, but especially a smartphone, is use a mist filter or a softening filter. I did this on my short film pre-owned and I really liked the way it turned out. It's a subtle look, but it takes that digital edge off and gives the footage more of a filmic organic feel. But sometimes I like to go even bigger and bloom the highlights or even fog the image. You can create some very stylized, cool looks depending on what you're doing. But what if you don't have a filter or maybe you forgot it? Can you add this in post-production? As a matter of fact, you can. Now, ideally you would capture the look in camera, but again, sometimes you can't do that or sometimes you change your mind and wanna add it in post-production. Case in point, I made a video recently showing how we recreated a shot from the Tarantino film, The Hateful Eight, using an iPhone. That movie was shot by famed cinematographer Robert Richardson. And on a lot of his work, he uses heavy backlight and likes to bloom the highlights in a stylized way. So we mimicked the lighting look pretty well when shooting, I think. However, we didn't have a Pro Mist filter, and so now I'm gonna add that in post. And to do that, I'm using a great plugin called Hawaii Super Glow, which is available from Effects Factory. All right, I'm in Premiere Pro, but this will work in Final Cut Pro, Motion, or After Effects as well. Go to your Effects tab, and I searched for Super Glow, and there it is. Double click, and you add it, and default, it of course grabs the highlights to glow it. So I've already gone through this and done a look that I wanted, and there's multiple ways to do it. You can go very stylized like this. You can go more subtle. But what I like to do is have it mimic a filter, like a Pro Mist filter, or even lighting or fog. You have a lot of different ways to go with this. And so like Robert Richardson often lights in movies, the stylized movies, that's what I'm going for here. You can control pretty much every aspect of the glow. And the thing is, this isn't just one glow. That's what makes this unique. It's six glows put together. And so right now you're seeing five of the glows. If I go to one, it drops down the intensity more or less. Or if I go to six, it pops it back up. And it's very photorealistic too. A lot of glows you see from built-in plugins in Premiere or Final Cut Pro or whatever, they don't do a very good job. They're kind of cheap looking effects. This one is not, and it's the first one I found that works like this. I mean, it works like you're doing it in camera, and that's what I like. Now, this may be too much, especially on the table. So what you can do is tweak it, move things around, like the threshold, the softness, the amount, fall off. So obviously this is stuff that would be a little bit extreme for this example, but you can see how you can control it. You can also control the mat, the compositing. Now here, let's just say that I don't wanna do the table. I just wanna do his hair. Again, kinda of like a Robert Richardson look where that's a top-down light that's very diffused. That's what's cool about doing a mat. So in the mat, you can choose HSV and then you choose the actual color that you're going to key. I'm gonna pick his hair. And now just his hair, that color is doing the glow. Now that's too much. That's probably still a little bit much. I'm just adjusting the settings here and creating a look that I think matches what's in my head. And the nice thing is this plays back in real time. Again, just imagine that there's a light on top of him and we're using a Pro Mist filter, but I'm doing this in post-production. So that's the first example. Now here's the close-up, the same shot. Done the same thing. I've gone through and adjusted it to my liking. And this one is a little more angelic. I'd say it's more of a softening glow than just a highlight glow. So it may not work in this exact setting, but I'm just showing you examples of how you could do it on your footage. So there it is with and without. Now a more traditional use for this versus a stylized use would be taking this shot. I made this video recently. It's kind of a hard lighting look. I did diffuse the light just a little bit, but it's mainly supposed to be like a single source light coming in, coming through a window. And so it's a hard light source and you might want to soften it up. I did use a filter on this, but it was a very subtle filter. And so I'm going to add a little more softness and glow to it. You can almost call this like a beauty glow or a beauty filter. So that's without it and that's with it. Very subtle, but it does really bring out a little more detail in her face, even though it's softening it. And it also illuminates her face a little bit more. And then again, when you, with this one, you can adjust the radius and you can almost make it look like there is fog in the room. There's a lot of different ways to implement this. 
but I really like the ability to do this in post-production after you've already shot. You decide later in post, like, hey, this would look good if it was softer, or hey, this would look good if it had a little bit of a glow. And now here is a more traditional shot. It's uh, obviously of me, an on-camera shot. Now here is just the shot that was color graded right out of the camera. And then here is a glow that I put on it to add a little bit of style to it. You especially see it over here in the window. Off and on. You also catch it over here on the gimbals and the table, and then you catch on the logo of my hat too. Now I'm doing a general luminance glow here. I didn't go in and do a key like I did on the first shot, but let's say that I did not want to have it on my hat. Again, you can kind of see there, let me go full screen, on, off. So again, let's say I don't want it on my hat. All I would do here is do a mask. And so I've got this mask now around my face and I would invert it. And so now none of the glow is actually hitting me. It's only hitting the door and the table over here. And so that could be a cool look, depending on what you're trying to do. For me in narrative work, glows are cool for sci-fi looks or for softening looks, stylized looks, but also for vintage looks. Think of a period piece like the 1940s, 50s, 60s, whatever it may be. You add a glow to that to maybe give it a nostalgic feel. You could also do it if there was a dream sequence or something in a movie. And then one other use that I would do with this glow, it's a more practical use, and that is make text glow. And so you can drop this on text and then you have a world of control, just like you do dropping it on objects or people or windows or whatever. You can obviously increase the glow to do crazy things. You can adjust the amount, the softness, et cetera, et cetera. It's really infinitely customizable. But one thing that I really like to do is you can control the color. And so it pulls the color from the source, which is obviously yellow. But let's say we wanted to make that a different color. Come up here to the color section. You got RGB. And so you can start adjusting. Now you got this cool orange glow behind the yellow text. Go the other way. You can go green. You have, again, infinite control over what you're doing here. And there's back to the default. And so it's a really versatile plugin that you can not only use for movies, especially shooting on an iPhone because of the way the iPhone over sharpens images. You can do stylized looks, you can do beauty looks, you can do sci-fi looks, or even here I could have softened my skin. And then you can also glow text or objects. It doesn't have to be text, this could be anything. You can put a glow around a logo, whatever you wanna do. So you can get Hawaii Super Glow from Effects Factory, along with other great plugins from Crumple Pop, Sugar Effects, and more. I've used plugins from all these companies for years and really love them. And they have free trials available too, so you can try it before you buy it. Effects Factory is the best place for all your plugins and templates for Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, After Effects, and more. Thank you, Effects Factory, for sponsoring this video. So again, I usually try to capture the look I want in camera, but it's great to have the option to do it in post-production too.